welcome to Asbury's Echoes. I'm Rhonda and this is Drew Hi. and this is our floss tube where I mostly talk about cross stitch and sometimes I throw something else in there that I work on I'm working on at the time. And Drew likes to share some of the things he's been up to lately. And it is really hot today and I don't keep my air very cold so it's really no, hot here it like 80 degrees I know. And I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm glistening today I'll be glad <laughs> when um, it finally cools off I get tired of the summer the heat the humidity we're in Iowa and the humidity can be pretty mm -hmm. pretty intense although we've been very lucky because the last few two or three weeks the weather was wonderful it's been a while since we've been here, and we've been pretty busy, haven't we? We went to the state fair. We hadn't been to the state fair in years. I don't Which, think. both that vlog and we also went to the Velisca X Murder House will be on my YouTube channel, which will be in the description. Go check those out. Okay. It's uploading right now. Yes, we went to the Iowa State Fair, and it was a lot of fun. And... Then Drew got to pick what we did the next day. So we went to the state fair. We spent the night in Ames, Iowa. And then the next day, we went to the Velisca Axe Murder House. Not something I would have chosen to do. Right? It's like 80%. That's so funny right now. There's a town, a very small town in Iowa, and it's called Velisca. And I think it was, was it 1912? It was like so. sometime around in there, 1912, and um, there was a, an, a murder in this house that has never been, they never figured out what happened or who did it, but it was a very sad story. And the house is pretty much, I think, the way it was back then. A lot of it was. There were things in it that I was like, no, those are not 1912 article, you know, things, but... They so it was an axe murder house. I used an axe, and they had a book called Bits and Pieces. <laughs> a child's book was sitting there beside the bed, and it was called Bits and Pieces, and it's probably not overly appropriate. But anyway, we did that, and then we went to the tree in the middle of the road, and it literally is this great big old tree cottonwood tree, and it's out in the country on gravel road, and the tree is literally in the middle of an intersection and it's a huge cottonwood tree and I should um, have remembered to show you the stick that I got from that cottonwood tree did you take a picture of it and put that in I could do that yeah. I don't know if, we, if everybody knows this or not but if you're lucky and you, you find it's usually twigs that are laying around on the ground around the tree and if you snap them and snap them just right there's a star in the middle of the little twigs so drew said he'll put that he'll put a picture of that and it's an old there's an old um american indian legend about that and it's really quite it's interesting so whenever i find a cottonwood tree i always try and find these stars and then what did we do oh we went and saw arnold the bull arnold the bull is what the biggest um, it's albert 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 the bull i should remember that i always call him Al arnold and i should remember albert because my father-in-law's name was albert but it's the biggest bull in the united states or something it's a great big humongous statue, a statue of a of a bull and his name is albert and it's kind of neat to see it, it was fun we did that and then my husband wanted to stop because as we were driving to find Albert, he remembered as a child his mom and dad taking him to see the plow in the tree. I had never heard of it. And we finally found it, and he was very dis he wasn't disappointed, he was just shocked because he said, well, I remember it. There was this old plow, with the and the tree had grown up in the middle of it. But now you can barely see it. You can only see like the very beginning of the plow on one side of the tree, and then you can see the, the back part of the plow. It's not very much of it sticking out of the back of the tree. And the legend or story behind that was there was a gentleman 
during the Civil War era, and he was plowing. And I don't remember if somebody came and talked to him or he just all of a sudden decided that he decided to join the Civil War. And so he just took his plow and leaned it up against the tree and left and went off to the war and forgot about it. And then when years later they came back to find the plow, the, the tree had grown up around the plow. So that was kind of, it was kind of an interesting little thing. And so that was what we did that week. And then, the next week. oh, then the next week my grandkids wanted to go to a water park. So we went to the water park. We went to Waterloo to the water park, and I'm not a water person, but it's funny what your grandkids will get you to do, because they got Grandma to go down um, the water slides, and yeah, <laughs> water slides, and there was a, what was that, <coughs> the one I didn't coaster. like at all, roller coaster, <laughs> and it was not fun, because it was like, jolted you some, oh, it was, I liked it, man. I didn't feel. enjoy it, but Drew, yeah, Drew and... Braxton, they went on it. And then me and my brother in law and Braxton went down it a couple of different times. Yeah, and it was a cold day. It was cold, it was overcast, it was raining a lot of the day. At one point, they we all had to get out because there was lightning. And it sounds miserable, but we had a good time. It really was. It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, although you picture me in a water, on a water slide. But I did it. I decided if my six-year-old granddaughter could go down these water slides, then her um, 58-year-old, 57, not really 58 yet, 57-year-old grandmother well could go be. with her. And so um, that was another thing that we did. I don't know. We've been busy. Very, very busy. But I think we've got a camping trip over Labor Day, but it's close. And then I think... Things are going to slow down. The garden's about done, so I've got that to that pretty much taken care of. Got a lot of canning done this year. Not as much as I have in the past, but I got a lot done. And then I can start concentrating on my stitching again because I haven't been able to do that, and it's been driving me nuts. I've got, I'm usually a monogamous stitcher, but we've been so busy and things have been so hectic, and what? I've got like monogamous. I usually only do one project at a time because it makes me nervous to have a bunch of them going on. But right now I, I have like, like that. I don't know. Huh? I understand that. I'm like that. You're like that, that too? I don't know. I've got like five, four, five, six different projects going on at the moment. So my goal is today and tomorrow to get a bunch of that done and then we'll get everything ready and we'll go camping and then we'll come home and got a lot of things in the works so there's some surprise things coming up and I'm excited but I'm also very stressed because I don't do well when I have a million things going at once anyway we're gonna try and keep this short and sweet I haven't had a lot of stitching time so I'll show you what um, I have one finish that's not fully finished and that is my blue winter house and I've had him, this is one of the things that I've had him finish for a while and it's driving me nuts because I haven't taken the time to sit down and get him laced and get him done and get him ready to go. So this is one of the pile of to be done, needs needs to be done Isn't projects. Like whip? Whip. No, that's a work in progress. This one's a full, this one's a finished, but it's not a fully finished object. So it's not an FFO, but it is a finish. Um, I have, in the Etsy shop, I have blue summer house, blue autumn house, and soon I will have blue winter house. And this one is stitched on my Nate Burkus fabric. And I stitched everything but the snow. So everything that, but the white. So the snowflakes, the snowman, the snow on the roof of the house, um, you know, the snow down here. None of that was stitched, and then I dyed my fabric. And then after it was dyed, then I came back and stitched all the snow because I wanted it to, I wanted the white. I wanted the snow to show up on this one. I think I like it like this. I don't know. I've considered now going back with a very, very light stain and staining 
the white just a, just a little to tone it down, but I'm, what do you guys think? Should I do that or should I leave it like this? I don't know. I know one thing I love about winter is a fresh falling, falling snow because I love the white, the bright white. Everything's always so. This is the one that covers up her windows with curtains and keeps her house looking like a creepy dungeon. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. But in the winter, everything is brown. And the snow just makes it, it's just like it changes your, your whole world out there. And it's just so pretty when it's first freshly, it's freshly nice. fallen snow. And the white and the contrast. And so I don't know. What do you think? Should I tone it down a tad or should I leave it like this? I'll wait and see before I lace it. See what people say before I lace it up and get it ready. But it is stitched on the Nate, Dur Nate Burkus fabric, and it is one over two, and it's all DMC, which is pretty much, pretty much a given when I stitch something, that's what I'm gonna do. So there's Blue Winter House, and it will be in the shop soon. I'm just not sure how soon. And then I have one more. I have the Spring, the Blue Spring House, and I'll get started on that soon because I want to have them done and ready to go okay and then after that I know I showed I was working on this one last time and this one's called all good things so give thanks for all good things um, it's kind of reminiscent it reminds me of the chicory because I absolutely love when the chicory starts blooming here um, the color of the chicory is just absolutely gorgeous and it usually grows it'll just grow on both sides of the gravel roads and it just like it just goes on forever and it's so pretty and this one I framed in a frame that was given to me it was made and given to me by my sister-in-law she's given me some of these frames Linda. and I just love them Aunt Linda yes, no, Aunt Linda made it. She not let, not one. Uncle Wes. Aunt Linda made it. So there's that one. And this one is in the store. It is called All Good Things. And there again, it's Nate Burkus fabric, one over two. And I did the same thing with this one. I stitched everything but the flowers. The flowers and the centers of the flowers. Oh, and the white down here in the basket. Um... So I stitched everything but the flowers and the white. Then I dyed it and then I came back and stitched because I wanted that to try and get the, the real pretty bright um, chicory flower color if I could. So there's that one. That was a finish. And then I have this one. I like red work. And I decided to try and do one of my own. This was um, based off of a friend's idea. She has done one and it's just, it's cute. And she uses buttons and it's, I just love it. So I tried doing, um, it's basically, it's real similar to hers. And she's, she wanted me to do it this way to see how it came out. And I kind of, I, I like it. That's cute. A cheap friend. So a little bird, the cheap. And that's what that means. Yeah, because instead of C H E A P, it's C H E E P. Because little birds cheap, you know. <laughs> so it's a it's a play on words. So a cheap friend, and it's done on um, the Nate Burkus fabric, and it's again one over two. And this is trim from Purple Paper Mountain. I use her trim a lot. I probably should place an order here. I'm getting low on some of the colors that I tend to use all the time. And it's backed on this real pretty. I like this fabric. So there's that one. And it's it's in the they're all actually if they're fully finished they're in the Etsy shop. And this one's in the Etsy shop. I think it would look really cute in a little girl's room. A cheap friend. Okay. What else do I have? Expensive friends better. You like expensive friends better? Mm -hmm. This is my little um, seasons. Little, little fin keeps. 
that are just the cutest little things just to stick in a basket, stick on a shelf. They're, they're tiny and they stitch up quick and I think that they would make perfect little gifts. There's four of them. So this one, this one would be like the spring one and it's the bees in the beehive. It's that one. And then I have um, a flag for summer with the sunflowers. And this one, if you know, if you, you might notice that, well here, I'll show you with this one, this guy. There's a little snowman. And these four are taken from, there's some changes, but they're taken from my Blue House series. So here you can see, this one I dyed before I stitched the white. This one I dyed after. I stitch the white so you can see the difference and it's the same little snowman the snowflakes are a little different and there's there's some changes too so there's that one and they would look really cute I think if you um, you know stitch stitch this and you could have it displayed with that if you wanted and then there's a fall one which is um, the three pumpkins and the blue moon and and again, all of the trim on these, they're all from Purple Paper Mountain. This one's like a dark red and a blue, and this is an orange, and then a green. These were stitched on, so the Nate Burkus works out to be a 36 count. And these were done on a 32 count. Um, remember what it's called the country mocha that's what it is the the 32 count Belfast linen and it was country mocha but about coffee or no I'm not I mean, sounds like it but I dyed it so you really don't need to dye the country mocha sometime I'd like to try dyeing just my threads and then stitching on like the country mocha because the, it always has such pretty modeling and it looks always looks so nice. But I always want to dye afterwards because I want that thread. It just never looks complete for me until I, I, I dye that thread. So one of these days I need to practice or work on seeing what happens when I dye. Dye the thread and then stitch and then I won't have to dye again. We'll see. I'm assuming you're talking about That'll be fun. Floss. Yeah, the, the floss. And then I have this one. Cynthia's pumpkins. I've got this wonderful friend that I've made just because of cross stitch. <coughs> and um, we've never met. But we talk back and forth sometimes daily on through Messenger. And she asked me if I could come up with a design with the three pumpkins with these specific colors. I would not have chosen these colors. It just would not have, I just wouldn't have. I mean, this, this pumpkin is 3021. I would never have thought to do a pumpkin in that color. But I said, sure, I'll do it gladly and those will and you know she wanted those words and she wanted some leaves and so this is what I came up with and I I think it turned out so sweet and I just love those colors together for pumpkins it just looks so fall and so primitive I it, I love it and so I named it Cynthia's pumpkins I named it after Cynthia and um, I really I hope she likes it I know she's stitching it right now so I like the way, I, I just love it. And again, it's on the Nate Burkus. I'm guessing she'll probably stitch hers on the Country Mocha. I think she uses that a lot. And hers always turn out beautiful. And then she gets them professionally framed and they're just, they're, they're gorgeous. But mine was done on the Nate Burkus and it was dyed after stitching. So I dyed this, the whole thing after I stitched it. And this one's called Cynthia's Pumpkins, and it's in the, the Etsy shop, and it's perfect, and it's just perfect for fall.
can keep this up all the way through Thanksgiving very easily. So that's that one. And then I have one more fully finished object, an FFO. And this one's called Those Simple Days of Autumn. And it's a, it's a nice sized um, pin cake. And it just, um, I love autumn. And I love hanging my clothes, my quilts. I, I wash up all the quilts that we'll be using through the winter and hang them out on the line so that they smell fresh and clean. And uh, pumpkins, we didn't get pumpkins planted this year, did we? It's the first time in a long time I haven't planted pumpkins. Because they always die. But we do have a lot of gourds. I didn't realize that we planted, I don't know how many, I thought I only planted one hill, but I don't know. We've got gourds galore out there, so they probably need picked. But I like to think that, you know, I don't, I never dress like that, but I don't know. I just love, <laughs> I just love this the house and the, um, the tree with the leaves are all gone and, and the fence and clothes on the line, pumpkins, and of course there's always a cat running around outside, isn't there? Mm -hmm. We don't have any black ones right now. It's never dominant. We used to have there. black ones, but now we have orange and orange and white and gray and white. And Which I like. Orange cat's probably my favorite. Is the gray one still around? I haven't seen him for a while. Squiggy? No. Mama? No. Milkweed. Sparrow? Milkweed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah he's Is he? I don't see. He, he, he comes out. and goes. We don't see him much. Um, and calico. We have we have a couple calicos. So, you know, if you have calico cats, you're going to have babies. So I'm sure we'll have babies again in the spring. This one is one of my favorites. I just, I don't know. I just love this. And there again, it is Nate Burkus fabric. One over two. Um, it's all DMC. It's very simple, but it just, it just, this is to me what autumn is. Okay, I think that's the last of my fully finished objects. So these are all in the Etsy shop, except for the blue winter house, obviously, because it's not done. And like I said, I've got a lot of things um, going on in the background. So have some Christmas things, some button things that I think you're going to like. They're, they're, these buttons, she's just, some of these buttons are, are just absolutely gorgeous. And so I've got some things with that. I've got um, a Halloween trio that I'm working on now. And this is part of it. It's not done yet, obviously. But this will be one of the three. And when it's done, it'll. I think it'll look really neat. I mean, the cats. I'm not. The mouths are going to look different. There's going to be some whiskers, and um, I'm going to cover some buttons with fabric, some little buttons with fabric to use on this and on another one to go with the trio. Um, so I've got that going on. I have. Um, friend and I, of mine and I are working on putting together a couple of kits that I'm going to offer. So that's the other thing I've been working on. I didn't realize how much work it was going to be. Once we get it all set up, I think it yeah. will be simple to, it'll be much easier for me to do kits, but to get it started is, um, cause I don't know what I'm doing. Huh? No, you do not. I don't know what I'm doing. So I've got to figure it all out. And that kit is going to have um, the Nate Burkus fabric because people have asked about it and I know it's expensive to order a whole yard of it and some love it and some really just don't and I get that it's not necessarily I find it very easy to stitch on but not everybody does and I get that it's um, it's not an even weave and there's a lot of slubs and different um, things in the fabric that to me give it that really primitive look that I like, but not everybody enjoys it, but there's so many of you out there that want to try to stitch on it. So I thought, you know, why not? We'll just, um, it'll be that, it'll be the Nate Burkus fabric and I'm going to have little dye packets so that 
what you see, my finished project, um, you should be able to get that look because it's going to be the die um, ratio that I put together that I use a lot. And um, so that'll be also in, in there in those um, kits. So watch for that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm hoping in a couple weeks we will have that out. I don't, I think we're gonna do pre-orders. That way we'll know how many to get, to get together. I don't know. This is all new to me. This is, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. I've been a lot, a lot stressed because <laughs> we've been so busy and I've been trying to do all these different projects. But that's what's coming next. So um, I hope you like the design. There's two of them and they're both fall. So I hope that you like the designs and that you would like to try a kit. If these go over, we'll maybe try a Christmas, a Christmas themed one and we'll just keep going, we'll see. But I think that's it for now because I wanna try and keep these short. I know I keep saying it, but my goal is every other oh, week, yeah, it's hot in here and the air just turned on. Um, every other week, putting a floss tube out, maybe even once a week, we'll see. Um, probably every other. Probably every other. Yeah. And then depending on what we've got going, we'll throw one in. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, and another thing with the kit, what, what we're planning to do is um, if you order the kit, then there will be at least one YouTube video and it'll show the dyeing process. It'll show you how to, how to um, make the dye and how to, um, how I dye it. And that will be available if you get the kit. There will be a link that shows you um, where to go to watch that video. I don't know if there will be more than that one or not. We'll see. I don't know. There might be one. If you're, if it's somebody who's never stitched before, maybe, I don't know. We haven't talked about that yet, but maybe I'll do another floss too, just a short one to, sh to show how to get started and to show you how I stitch on this fabric. We'll see. All right. Anything else you can think of? Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and turn on bell notifications and share to your friends so they can watch it. Yeah. And let us know, Drew got a new, um, what do you call it? A new a stand that- A speaker with a light, and it's a tripod. Yeah, so hopefully you can hear us better because I know sometimes um, I might talk too loud. He talks too slow and too soft, yeah, or too slow. No, he talks too fast. I don't talk too fast. And, and, and too, quietly so hopefully so I got that and we're both getting new phones soon hopefully so that'll definitely help with the video quality so we're hoping, we're hoping. any suggestions I'm always open to any suggestions any ideas um, and there again don't forget to like and subscribe if you Turn enjoy on this notifications so you get notified every time we upload what is that that little bell yes the little hit, bell. hit the little bell it should be right next to the subscribe button okay all right, sounds good. And thank you, and we will see you in the next one. In the next one. Bye. Goodbye.